So I guess I'll do like four laps. Curious to see what happens when I turn around. One thirty three. Uh, my leg drive is what I call the reactive leg drive with the Teflon and my biking shorts, spandex or lycra. If I rotate the top, the legs just respond naturally. Otherwise my bottom would go the other way. Six seven at one thirty two. Six six one thirty three. Okay, I'm going to turn around. Try to keep the same heart rate. Speed should drop. I'm also going to get rid of some of the water here. Let's see what happens going the other way. No, it didn't feel like much difference. Oh yeah. It is. It's five seven only. So I'm gonna to try to get this up to six then. Because there is a current. Okay, six two, one thirty-five, so this is more work. Try to just Keep it at six and go maybe six four the other way. If I rotate the top, the legs just respond actively. Otherwise my bottom would go the other way. One of the reasons I'm doing this, I want to see, you know, if not using downward force, what that buys me. And again, the idea is that the most efficient part of the stroke is going to be at zero angle. 
So it actually should be high to use the edge, to use the wing, right? So it's pulling us forward. And it also should be uh, close to zero angle because if it's great on zero and you're pushing, you're just pulling the boat up, I say for no good reason. And if it goes beyond, you're sort of pulling it down. So you really want to concentrate around that sweet spot, which I see here. So if this stroke turns out to be more efficient for this pace uh, rowing, that has implications for the triplane paddle, for the horizontal, because that's meant to put the, the leading edge of the foil is here, right? It's based on the rowing blade. And that will go right in. And there is no negative angle to worry about. So we can go before, well forward and come back, right? because of the way that's set up. There's no negative or positive angle in, in rowing. So in fact, if this stroke works fairly well for the wing paddle, I suspect it's going to work even better for the triplane paddle. Because with the triplane paddle, there is no possibility of putting downward strip force on. And uh, if you think that's essential, you will not like the triplane paddle. The other thing is that uh, you can have nice long strokes and what the having the rowing blade based on the rowing blade, the leading edge here, that not only makes the paddle effectively bigger, reducing the slip, but it tends to take you more in the, in the forward direction. Because if you're only using drag, the drag works by pushing water back and it pushes you uh, in the normal direction, which means perpendicular to the drag. But the lift force is 90 degrees to that. So if you have a good lift at the beginning, that's going to pull you more forward. So really it's all about direction and force. Um, trying to push, basically push the water directly back. You don't want to push the water out to the right or over to the left. You don't want to be pushing it down. You don't want to be pushing it up. You want to push it directly back. And uh, this will tend to do that only if you're here, although you still have the, only at the uh, zero vertical. Before and after, it's going to make the water go up or down, not push it directly back. But if that works fairly well here, and again, you need a very vertical high, well then on the triplane. So the next thing I'm gonna do, of course, is to try this on the triplane paddle, uh, like this, and see what happens. Because when I do it like this with the wing blade, it's not designed. You can do it, but I'm not getting advantage of the lift for getting my direction where I want it to go. Okay, so those are some concluding comments here on this uh, on this trial. Uh, so once again, this is Gary for the California Center for Research on Applied Paddling uh, with another crap video from beautiful Bayona Creek.